You're watching the last As Far As Anything of this year. We took a break last month, but we've been super busy all month with amazing product launches for you. Hard at work, check out our blog for everything we've been up to lately. And now let's get right to it and hear your questions. Today we're taking questions with two of our developer advocates, Eric and Fosco. We're gonna get right started with Eric. I have my own file server, which stores a lot of big files, like MP3, videos, and also images. I want to store the URL for those files as a PF file and not just as a URL string. Is that possible? Got it. So the interesting thing about storing files on Parse is that we create PF files for files that you upload. We also limit those files in size to around 10 megabytes. If you want to store files that are larger than this, you can use um, something like an S3 or another place to store these files. And instead of converting those into some sort of PF file, which you can't do, you can just store the URL to wherever that file got uploaded. Is there any kind of pre-release checklist to help developers ensure that their app will have a seamless transition to production? When you switch your app from dev to prod, uh, nothing happens on our end. However, when you do consider or launch your application to the App Store or put it out there even for testing, you want to consider a couple things. One of those is to check and make sure that your objects all have ACLs. And if not, apply something like one of our uh, class level permissions. In addition, there's a lot of other small things you, you should consider. And you can check out the security guide to get a better idea for all of this. How about parse push support for Windows 10? We currently don't support push for Windows 10. However, this issue is currently being discussed in our GitHub. And just, just to remind you, all of our SDKs are open source, and all of the issues and discussions can be seen on our GitHub. According to Parse Docs, tracking push opens is not supported on Unity now. When will it be supported? We currently don't have plans to support push opens for, for Unity. However, you can take a look at and interact with our GitHub community, uh, open an issue, open a task, and let's start talking about this with our developers. Can I add the Facebook button from PF Login View Controller to a PF Sign Up View Controller? We currently don't have a Facebook Login button uh, on the Sign Up Controller, but you can add this on your own. Take a look at our SDKs. They're all open source. You can add this yourself. Also, take a look at how other popular apps use uh, the Login and Sign Up flows and see how the Login button, when, when a user taps on it and if they don't have an account, uh, we'll, we will create an account for them, um, and you can, you can modify or uh, follow this behavior as well. Would you or could you have a GitHub repo to centralize issue tracking of the Parse backend? This is a great idea. However, we're, we're not going to be using uh, GitHub issues to track backend issues. The best way to get help is to go to parse.com slash help and submit an issue there. This allows us to track the application that uh, the issue may have started from, and also get some contact information about who you are and a little bit more context around your problem. The FB Start program is very cool and a bit of a hidden gem. Can you tell us more about it? And Eric, I know you've done a ton of work with it. Uh, FB Start is a free program from Facebook for mobile apps that uh, offers uh, mobile apps access to benefits, uh, mentorship, and also resources. It's a great free program that anybody can sign up, uh, sign up to. And uh, there are three different tracks. There is a bootstrap track for an app that hasn't launched yet. There is a, um, a launch track. And then there is a accelerate track. And at each track, you get slightly more benefits. Um, and it really depends on you know, the stage of your application. I have been going around the world talking to people about FB Start uh, as a program, and it's something that I really believe in. And I think that any mobile application, if it's a game or a, uh, a business application, anything, any native application um, should, should be signed up for this right away. And you can start using a whole bunch of awesome benefits. One thing I'd like to call out is we currently offer a year of GitHub, which is, I think, pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot of other things, like if you do Stripe payments, uh, there is a, a $50,000 Stripe uh, processing um, without fee. There's a bunch of oh, other wow. stuff, and we keep adding things to the program. So oh, if you're wow. interested, you're building an app, you've launched an app, or you're, you haven't launched yet, but you're thinking about it, sign up to FP Start. Oh, that's fantastic. And parse credits are included in that, right? There's parse credits, too. Oh, even better. Awesome. Fosco, thanks for joining us. We've got a question for you from Vic. I understand the safety concerns related to class name editing. However, is there a chance you can allow us to edit class names for apps that are not yet in production? Um, 
I'm sorry, Vic, but unfortunately we won't be able to do that. Uh, due to the way that our objects are stored, uh, you will have to create a new class if you want to use a different name. Will the Rust API session token expire on its own, or do you have to create something in the code to let it expire? OK, I'm going to assume that, that you mean a user's session token that you've gotten from logging in via the REST API. Um, and that won't expire on its own. Uh, what you need to do is like log the user out. So you can call the logout endpoint uh, on the user uh, resource with that session token. And it will log it out and expire the session token. Two questions. Release date of Parse SDK support for watchOS 2. And also, when is the tvOS SDK going to be available? Um, it's always great to be able to give good news. So, you know, we got this question like last week, um, but we actually launched these yesterday. Mm -hmm. So these are both available. Everything's open source. Uh, there were a bunch of articles all over the internet about it. So go check it out and start building uh, the next big TV app. Can we use Parse for sending notifications from user to user? And is it possible to do A-B testing? Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can actually do both of these. Um, you have to do a little bit. I mean, the A-B testing, we have a uh, part of the push composer where you can set up an A-B test. Um, however, the user stuff, you need to associate your, the installation object, which is the, what gets saved that you're targeting push notifications to. You need to actually store the user on there. So now you know whose device this is. And then when you're writing a push query, you can use the user to say, I want to send a push to an installation matched by this user. Um, so that's how you do user to user push. Um, and then the A-B testing, we have the composer for that. Uh, you can send uh, an A version and a B version to a sample set. And then you can look at the results. And then you can choose to send the winner to the rest of the audience. So there's some interesting stuff there. Mm -hmm. And you can A-B test both messaging and delivery time, right? Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. There's a couple different things that you can A-B test against, like delivery time, message, and I think there's you know a few more little options in there. Check it out. Do you plan to include Passbook integration for apps? Generating passes is as complicated as push notifications, and Parse solved that perfectly. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, there hasn't been a lot of interest behind adding Passbook. Um, I feel like that's still something that's on the developer to do that part of it. Um, but you know, with, with the SDKs being uh, open source, maybe, that's, maybe there's room for development there. How do I force HTTPS on static files? Using the Parse Express HTTPS redirect module still allows direct access to, to static files. Ah, that is true. OK, so that, that's due to the way that our hosting product is built. Mm. And that's not something that we'll be able to change very easily. Uh, so this is one of those things where you should expand beyond the hosted Parse product and use something like Node on Heroku, which we've been talking about a lot lately. And it's something that you know I'll continually be pushing people towards. That would be a good way to solve this issue and be able to create customized application logic. I'm making a mobile app that contains content submitted from users and only appears after being approved by an administrator using a flag called is approved. So how do I ensure that no one can insert any content and mark it as approved themselves? Ah, great. So this is, this is a core use case for uh, cloud code and triggers. Okay. Right. So you can put a before save trigger on this class. And you make sure that if the is approved field is being set, that the user uh, uh, executing the save is an administrator, or that they're using the master key. And if it's not one of those two, then you just reject it entirely. So that's a great way to say, look, only these kind of users or only the master key can save this field with this data. Another thing from this example is that um, you might funnel access to this class through like a cloud function. So rather than querying this collection directly and saying, give me all the records, you're going to get the ones that uh, even say they aren't approved. Mm. Um, so what you might do is create a cloud function. And you say, get the records. And in the cloud function, you write a query. And you explicitly say, uh, where is approved equals true. Um, and you 
basically obscure the class from the client to prevent them from seeing stuff that they're not supposed to see. Oh, gotcha. Awesome. I have AWS credits. Is there any way to take advantage of these while using PARS? Um, initially, like we were going to say no, but uh, it's it's true you can. Like if you have AWS credits, go ahead and and run an instance on AWS. Use our like Node uh, Express examples. Run webhooks, um, and you can take advantage of running like a full application uh, logic server on AWS and integrate that with Parse via webhooks. Well, thanks, Fosco, for joining us today. That's a wrap for our December Ask Parse Anything. Here's a little something special we've got for you as a little holiday cheer. Hoping you guys have a great, fantastic time with your family and friends, um, and happy building over the holidays. There's been a lot of great stuff that we released in the past past couple months. Enjoy the new dashboard as well. And a lot of cool new stuff coming in the new year. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>